everyone welcome back to my channel today is Friday September 2nd and today I'm doing another episode in the granny square along because I'm still granny squaring along and I see that you are too on Instagram so that makes me happy and also you know I'm in Utah and the summer isn't over for us yet so I know I said I was only going to do just granny square tutorials this summer but it really doesn't start cooling down till about October 1st so we're still in summer here so I think I'm pretty safe because I still want to show you um, some projects that I do with granny squares before I move on to other crochet tutorials besides granny squares so speaking of granny squares and tutorials so I did do a granny square tutorial so I'm not going to show you when I do these tutorials how to do the granny square I'm just going to show you you know how I took those granny squares and what I did beyond that so I showed you um, how to make the granny square this is a free download to you of my granny square chart along with a stitches chart along with well I should probably unclip that along with um, this chart right here that shows you all of my chunky thread colors that I have so far. But so what I wanted to say is my, um, this is a five round granny square, which is what we've been talking about, you know, in, in our granny square along, meaning we do, let me just grab one. We'll do like four rounds and then we pick a color to do a fifth round. But you know, all granny squares are granny squares, no matter how many rounds you put on them. So I show this in my first granny square tutorial where here's a two round, that's what I mean by rounds, right? Here's a three round, four. So, you know, in quilting we call rows, but this is a granny square because it's in a round or in a square, but you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, you can just keep going up as high as you want um, to do different projects. So I'm gonna show you a project today when um, we're doing two rounds, a little project with two rounds, and then another project where we are doing um, doing four rounds, okay? And so, but first I wanted to show you about my granny starters and the progress on them because I did finish my granny starters and let me move this out of the way. And I did finish those and I wanted to show you, and yes, I will be working on another chart so that I can tell you all those colors and then we can add it to that. So let me push these out of the way. So here are all of my granny starters. Now I talked to you about this a couple episodes ago in the granny square along and showed you how I use the fabric evenly, fabric, yarn evenly and so I have 32 colors and so all 32 colors are used within these and Cassidy um, is putting all of, a picture of all of these together in the slideshow so that you can see them but I'll just kind of pull these out so you can see what I'm talking about so what I told you uh, what I do is you can do it with any amount of colors you can start with four colors and place them in all different order and meaning you can make four granny squares with four colors this is just an example meaning there's just four squares obviously they're all different colors but meaning you would take if you're using four colors you would do the same color in a center the same color in a second round same color in a third round and the same color in a fourth round mixing them all up so if i was using this let's just say these are the same you know, oranges, I would just make sure that everything is mixed up and they look really different, but you've used each one of them four times and each one of them goes in each granny square. Now I know that sounds confusing with four, but I mean, you could do that with um, six, eight, seven, you know, whatever you wanna do if you're doing four rounds, whatever's divisible by four. What I did was I did with 32 and did what was you know, just divisible by that, meaning it was pretty easy because what I did was I just did a starter. I did 32 starters with every color that I have, okay? And then again, I did, then I just picked them up and did a second round with every color that I had and picked them up again and did a third round with every color that I had. And I just 
you know, continued on and here's my fourth round. So I just wanna show you what they all look like. And yes, again, I am doing a printable so I can tell you exactly what I did. But this is just one possibility and I didn't plan anything. I just, you know, my plan was doing a starter with all 32 colors and then doing a second row with all 32 colors and then doing a third row. And then I just kept continuing on and on and on. And so if I did that again, I would just, you know, I just randomly would pick colors out of the basket and do a second row. I wouldn't use, when I did my lipstick starter, for instance, here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use Vivid for my second one. I would do another color and I, I would just, they would all just end up different. So I'm just gonna give you the chart of what I did so that you have the picture and that you have the chart and it kind of gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. But this is an easy way to do your granny squares when you're um, not having to think, that you just know that you're just picking them up and just putting the next color on. And that's a really fun way to do that. Crochet is relaxing anyway, and it's even more relaxing if you kind of um, don't have to think too hard about your coloring and you know that kind of stuff. And so that's why I wanted to show you about my starters and, and how I do that. And so here's the progress on those. Those are done. They are blocked. And so I showed you a picture or Cassidy did in the opening of them on the blocking board. And I also showed that on my Instagram um, that these were blocked. And I just used a couple blocking boards and did them all at the same time. And so I'm excited about that. And when I make my next set of 32, for a blanket or a bigger project or something that I'm working on now that I'll show you at the end here, that I'll just do the same thing and it will completely come up with a whole different, you know, look. But that's a great way to use all of your colors of yarn that you have and use them evenly and make sure that they're dispersed evenly throughout your project. All right, so that's enough about my granny starters. I hope you guys are having fun with yours. And the next thing I'm gonna show you is, again, like this two round, this project that I started like this. I did not block these until after I put these together. But this is what I started out with, okay? And I know I sneaked, sneak peeked this on <laughs> Instagram a little bit. And then I, after I did this, I did a single crochet border around here, around each of these squares. I'll show you how I do that real quick. But do you wanna see what I made? Well, I mean, obviously you probably did see because it's in the slideshow. But look at this cute lamp. I just love it so much. Okay, I'm gonna to have to move it up and down and around, but just so you can kind of see it, all right? So this little lamp, um, I got from Target. I'm doing a big lampshade. And here, let me just set this aside. Cast, you wanna just hand me this for a second. I got so much stuff here. This is kind of big, but I'm gonna lay it down. But this is a lamp. Can you even see that, sis? Hard bit, yeah. I mean, this is a lamp that I love. Look how it looks kind of like hexy shape, honeycomb shape. But I've had it in my family room forever, okay? And I love the lamp. I love the size and the style. And when I say forever, I probably had it for like, I don't know, three years. And then here's the lampshade that is on it. And the lampshade is flat, meaning it doesn't taper way up. And so that's what you're gonna need if you wanna do a covered lampshade, okay? So I'm doing, I'm doing that with bigger granny squares and I'll talk about that again in a minute. But I knew, as you can see, obviously, I can't even fit that in the camera <laughs> very well. And so I also wanted to do a little lamp and I thought, well, I'm gonna go find a cute little lamp so that I can show you guys how to do it because they're gonna be made exactly the same way, just one with bigger squares and one with smaller. And so Kath and I went shopping to Target a while ago and I saw on the end cap, there was a whole bunch of lamps this size and this is, this is what it is right here. Okay, it's a threshold table lamp. That's what the SKU number is. But they had several, they were all off-white, if I remember right. Weren't they, Cass, all off-white? 
maybe someone was beige and yeah, one was up. just really neutral colors but um i thought well they were kind of had a chalky ceramic feel to them and i thought those would be so fun finished with my chalky um, paint too or any chalk paint so i bought this one i could have left it off white it would be cute too but i just i really wanted to pop a color and this is almost straight i just want to say that now you can see that i don't know if you can see it but I really couldn't tell if it tapered or not. It just barely tapers. And so I'm like, okay, that's gonna work. Now I could have maybe went to Hobby Lobby and just found a small lampshade that fits on here because I didn't even put a light bulb in here because I wanted to be able to take it off and show you. You know, this is the kind of lamp base that's nice that you can just add any shade onto. Um, but anyway, so I just wanted to show you what that looks like. I wanted to do something, go somewhere that was available to a lot of you that you maybe could find the same lamp if you want to do the same thing. And again, there's many different styles in here, but they're about the same size. And all the lampshades are the same size on that end cap at Target. And um, of course, that was in the home decor section. And, but you know, look around to see if you have a lamp in your house, just like I did in my family room. I kept looking at that. I've been looking at it for a year going, I really wanna cover that with granny squares. And so I'll do that in the, you know, during the granny square along. So I'm finally getting around to doing that. And so I'm gonna set that base over here so we can talk about this. And so I was happy to do this because number one, look how cute and tiny this is, okay? For a little lamp, I did put a light bulb in it when I finished this and plugged it in and turned off all the lights just to see what it would look like. And it's just such a cute little, um, it just shows all the little colors and jewels through it. And it's just like mood lighting. It's just so cute. I just think it'll be so fun by a little bedside or in here. I'll probably end up keeping it in here, but it's perfect for mood lighting. It's so cute. All right, so what I did was when I got the lamp base, I just um, took my measuring tape this is, I'm just gonna go ahead and explain how I got started with this because, you know, you're all gonna have different size lamp base, lamp shades and stuff like that. And so it's all about the shade. It's not anything about the base. And um, so what I did is I just went ahead and measured around it and wrote that measurement down. And then because I have these for a sample, you know how much I use these? I'm so glad. I crocheted these in the first place to show you in my tutorial, but I use these to measure things so much. So, you know, then I laid these down and I'm like, okay, could I fit three, three rounds across here? Well, it was way too short, but I'm like, well, I could put maybe four rounds, but then, you know, and then I thought, okay, well, I could do this whole thing maybe, but I wanted something that was squares. And so when I went to lay these across here, I could see that by the time I laid these across here and then it takes room when you're putting the crochet around it, a single crochet, that that would work just right. And so that's, you know, that's what I did and that's what I started out with. And that's why it helps me to measure with these. So I'll probably never use these in a project. I'll always keep these so that I can use them against my projects. And so what I did was I just grabbed that, decided on a color, any color that I wanted to do, um, you know, would look good. But I just thought I kind of wanted pink and then to paint this with tea kettle, I really wanted that 1930s, 40s, 50s retro vintage look. And I really wanted it to go in here. As you know, this matches my curtains in my sewing room really well. So I decided to use uh, my frosting chunky thread okay so here's what my chunky thread looks like in the skein and of course after I wind it in winders that's what it looks like in the cake and so I just want to show you I know I showed you a single crochet before but this is a tutorial so I want to be able to show you how I just simply add that border around there so let me just get this started this probably should work okay. That's a little yarn bowl to spin in there. And so all you do is you can start anywhere, but really it's nice to start in the corner for me because that's just what I usually do, so I'm used to it. So you just put your needle right there into the hole, grab your yarn, 
and for a single crochet you grab your yarn again and go through so there's one single crochet and in each corner I'm going to do three so go in the hole don't wrap your yarn first pull up yarn you've got two on there on your hook wrap again and go through two and that's your second single crochet okay let me come a little closer to you Cass says all right so again for the third one in the corner go in the hole grab your yarn you've got two grab your yarn and go through both of them there's three single crochets and on the top you can see three chains one two three kind of chain looking on the top of that single crochet now what I'm gonna do is I have three double crochets and I'm gonna go in the top chain see so both loops of that top chain I'm gonna go through that grab my yarn grab around do one single crochet go into the next chain in the top of that double crochet when I'm saying chain the top of every stitch shows a chain so I like to call it a chain just so that you know exactly what I'm talking about but I'm going through those two loops or chain in the top of each double crochet and doing a single crochet so I've done three on those there's three more to do one two three now remember if you ever need to see me do this even slower than this you can always uh, watch this section of the video in slow motion by pushing those uh, those buttons that YouTube has and I also in this written part of this chart right here do explain the single crochet stitching and I have shown this on other tutorials as well so I just don't want you to be lost doing that okay so I've got six done here I've got three in my corner and now I need to do three in this corner again so one two three and now I've got six to do here so I'm just going to do it a little bit faster now just so that I can get it done but I want you to see what it looks like and notice how I'm holding up here so I can keep control if I'm holding down here and trying to get that hook in there you know that just is very awkward so I hold clear up to the top so it's easy for me to insert that hook where I need to Okay, so I've got three here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'm gonna do three in this corner. Doing the six on this side now, and I'm just gonna keep going around. Now on this one I had started, I had joined the granny right there, so that's kind of a little knot I just push my hook through it it's okay wherever you started and stopped it's going to be you know look a little bit different okay wait I just lost my count here no that was right you know sometimes it's hard to talk and crochet at the same time <laughs> all right so I'm gonna finish up with this last corner I about lost my yarn there these last six to do and then I'm just going to join in that top you know the first single crochet in the top of that with the chain with the slip stitch so just pulling it through like that, pull up a loop like my grandma told me, find my scissors. <laughs> Should always have my scissors right in front of me and then just clip that. And then I pull that tail through there and pull it up right there. Okay, 
and then I just join these together, put them in the needle. I'm not gonna do that now, but put them in a needle and thread behind that pink there. And so that's what I did with that. That's how I did that entire lampshade. And let's see, I started, so I knew I did needed to do three across. So what I did was I just started doing three across like this. I had measured around, but I wasn't really sure how it was going to meet. And so I just started doing three, joining them and making it one long piece until I got around to here. And let's see, that's one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Did I count that right? Just wanna do it again. Yeah, so it's nine around and three up. So I need 27 total for that. And, but again, I wasn't really sure till I got to the end. When I got there, there was kind of a gap between about this, this big of a gap. But I knew that after I did this whole section and blocked it together, that I could kind of, within the blocking, kind of stretch that out and pull a little bit. Now I'm gonna have Cass insert a picture here of what it looked like when it was on the blocking board. Now it's obviously longer than the blocking board. So what did I do? I grabbed, you know, two blocking boards, all right? And I just put them end to end and you'll see that in the picture. But because I've got these square grids on the blocking board, I can really just kind of, um, block however size I need to. I can kind of make them a little bit bigger or I can block them in just a little bit smaller, meaning by using my rust proof T-pins here. Okay, it's important you use rust proof pins. And so I just used these in the board and you can kind of squish them in because these are 100% cotton. I needed it a little bit smaller and so I just pinned it around to kind of where I needed it to measure for the lampshade just to kind of help me I mean, it's not like it was really far off and so I could get away with, you know, just trying to make it shrink a little bit because it's 100% cotton. All I did was put, I didn't put hot water in the spray bottle, but I put warm. I don't know why I just did that. It's the first time I've tried to make it shrink and it worked because I kind of, it was kind of loose on the blocking board. And when I sprayed it at night and saturated it with that warm water and let it lie flat, then, um, when I woke up the next morning, it was all smooth and flat and looked really nice. So I was pretty happy with that. So that's what I did. That was what the picture looked like before I removed it that Cass showed you. And so then all I had to do, here's the seam of the lampshade. So I just went ahead and um, seamed that there. And when I say seamed it, I just wrapped them around. I took my needle and I thread it with this frosting instead of crocheting. It was, it was too tight to crochet and I didn't want to like bend the lampshade or something like that. So all I did was just do a whip stitch with the two chains together with the matching yarn. And then I just tucked the ends under. And then because this top of this was tapered just a little bit, then I went ahead and took a needle and thread and I just went in through every other stitch around here and then just pulled a little bit. So you can see it kind of gathered a little bit at the top just a touch and then I knotted it and then tucked the, the ends down under and that's what it looks like. And that's how I made this lampshade. So again, I'll put it on there. You can see it in the pictures, but I just, I just love it. I'm gonna, I have a clear little, a smaller light bulb and it's clear that I put in there. And it's just so fun. And I think it's gonna add a lot of personality you know, to my sewing room or my desk or wherever I might need, you know, it's not for a work light. I mean, I have, you know, heavens, I have enough of those for my hot lights and everything around that I have for task lights. This is not for crafting. This is for, you know, for mood lighting and for the cuteness factor. And so one more glance right there. And I really didn't plan my colors. I just did them scrappy. And there you go on that. All right, sis, you wanna just set that out of the way over there and then hand me this big lampshade and I'll just talk about that for a second. And so what I'm doing with this, I know that's really tall there, but what I'm doing with that is I just kind of measured the height of it 
and found out that these four round granny squares right here fit perfectly if I do three. When I say perfectly, it hangs over. So I'm just, I'm gonna move that out of the way because you can't really see, but just know that that measures 10 inches tall. And so what I did with these is I laid these out on the lampshade and measured them and they're just about, oh here, I'll just, I'll just show you right now. And of course we all crochet differently, but these, uh, each one that does not have the fifth border measures around three and a quarter inches before the border. So this measures 10 inches exactly right here, okay? And my lampshade is exactly 10 inches tall. But what I wanted to do with this lampshade, because the lampshade has a lot of space, it has about this much space before it hits the top of that lamp, I thought it'd be really cute to, by the time I add the borders, I know it's gonna be a little bit closer to 10 inches. And so um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of border on the bottom, like a cute little ruffle or something to make up for that. And so in my next crochet video, you know, next time then I will, which will probably be next week, then I will show you my progress on the lampshade and kind of show you what I'm doing. I haven't even chosen my colors yet of what I wanna do. Uh, you know, I won't be using frosting again. I'll be doing something else for that to go into my family room. And so that's that project. Now, the next project is I wanted to show you this one using four rounds again. Look at this cute little jar. Okay, so I did the same thing. It's the very same thing, except for instead of wrapping this around the lampshade, I wrapped it around a jar. All right, so I'm a person who loves jars. So I have done quilt patterns. I, I brought these out to show you. This is in, uh, this is included. Let's see what's even in here. I can't, oh yeah, it's my, I've got a bunch of thimbles in here because I love to collect little things and you know, why not jars? And I've, I've loved that ever since I was a little girl and I've just continued that on. And I especially love vintage jars, but you can make new jars look vintage too. This one is not a vintage jar, but I made it look old and vintage and I'll show you how in a minute. But anyway, this is in my canning jar pattern. And so I've often, in several of my patterns, done quilted things that you wrap around jars. And so I've also liked to do crochet things with my jars. Like here's one with, with uh, spools. Here's one with buttons, you know, that I've shown you before. And so you can do any of these depending on what rounds you wanna do. Again, I could do a two round one and do it too high for this one, or I could just do one single one all around the jar of all different scrappy ones, that'd be cute. And so I just kinda of wanted to bring those in to give you ideas, but I'm gonna talk more about this jar right here. So this is what this jar looked like when I bought it. Okay, I bought it in a set of three a while ago and I use them for all different things. This is what the lid looks like. So obviously I spray painted the lid, okay? And I like this jar for this too because I knew I wanted to do two granny squares on top of each other. And so I wanted something that was straight like this and didn't go, you know, again, really curvy because that's what you want to look at if you're doing any jar. This one curves. And so you'd probably wanna just do something that covers up this straight part right here. And so I spray painted the lid and I asked uh, Mr. Hunt, I marked this in the center, this circle, and asked um, Mr. Honey to drill a hole there and I put a knob there on top of there. And I know I've done tutorials on, on this a million times on my blog and retreats and stuff like that, but I like to spray paint my jar lids and uh, drill a hole in the middle and then put vintage knobs or knobs that look vintage that I get from all different places. Pretty sure, like I said, I got this from Hobby Lobby. And I just like how that looks. This jar is filled with my old clothes pins. Let's see if I can get that off. These are really, really vintage old clothes pins. And, um, so what I did with this is I did the exact same thing. 
I just did a single crochet around this, but remember the only difference is this is four rounds instead of two rounds. So I used my leaf. I thought that would be really cute with the red lid. And so I used that leaf and did a single crochet, three in the corner, all the way around, just like normal. And then I joined them together and I ended up needing 10. So five, five around, on, but two rows. So that was 10 of them. And I'll have Cass put a photo in here of what those 10 looked like together. And so again, just like the lamp, I formed the whole thing together before I blocked it. And so um, I'm gonna have her show you what the 10, the two rows look like before I joined them together with a single crochet again. And I don't know if I did tell you that, the lamp, but I joined the squares together with another single crochet. So just the exact same way, that's how I joined the squares with, with a single crochet. And exactly how I showed you in my granny square afghan, how you join squares together that's exactly how I did the lampshade and this. And so I'll have her show you the pictures here. Okay, so you can see the two rows before I single crocheted them together. And then I did the same thing. I just blocked them. And I ended up having to do the same thing with that, kind of blocking them so they would shrink just a little bit when I say a little bit, I'm talking like, you know, three quarters of an inch for the whole thing. And um, so that worked out and I just wrapped that jar and that was really fun to do. And you can do it with any size jars. You can do this with any size lamps. I also have some other projects that I have done with, with jars, um, with crochet that is different than this that I'll show you probably like next month and pretty quickly and because I want to show you some other crochet before I show you that one and so I hope that you've enjoyed this video let me show you my lamp lampshade again it's kind of hard dragging around the <laughs> dragging around the cord but there's the there's the cute lampshade and here's the granny square jar so I hope I've inspired you to make a granny square lampshade granny square jar and I will chat with you later.